everyone! Get ready to explore the wonders of NASA's Kennedy Space Center, where history, science, and the future of space travel come to life. We start our journey by checking out the Mars Rover Vehicle Navigator. This futuristic vehicle is designed to handle Mars's rough terrain and extreme weather. Did you know that a day on Mars is just a little longer than a day on Earth? About 24 hours and 37 minutes? Scientists hope that one day, humans will drive on Mars. Next, we stepped into Journey to Mars and met a real astronaut. They explained NASA's plans to explore Mars and beyond. Fun fact! Astronauts train for Mars missions by practicing in the Arizona desert, since it's the most Mars-like place on Earth. Let's walk through the rocket garden. During our visit, a giant Christmas tree was lit up next to the rockets. Imagine celebrating the holidays where astronauts trained to land on the moon. This is where you see real rockets that went to space. Some of them are taller than a 10 story building. Fun fact the first astronauts who went to space sat in the tiny capsules smaller than a car. Can you imagine being squeezed in there for days? Time for the bus tour. This is the only way to visit restricted NASA areas where you can see real launch sites and the legendary VAB, also known as Vehicle Assembly Building, one of the largest buildings in the world. Did you know that the VAB is so big that clouds can form inside it? That's how massive it is. Our next stop was the Moon Tree Garden. This garden is special because it, it has trees grown from seeds that went to the moon. There's also a big statue of the Apollo 11 astronauts, the first to land on the moon. Fun fact, when they returned to Earth, scientists made them stay in a special quarantine for 21 days, just in case they brought back moon germs. We stepped into the Apollo Center to relive the moment humans first walked on the moon. The highlight, Saturn V, the most powerful rocket ever built. Did you know that Saturn V is taller than a 36-story building? It launched astronauts to the moon at 24,500 miles per hour. That's faster than a bullet. Next, we watched a realistic launch video showing how a rocket separates into three stages before re reaching space. When a rocket blasts off, it doesn't go to space all in one piece. It has three stages, like a giant space puzzle that falls away as it climbs higher. First stage. The bottom part of the rocket is huge and holds the most fuel. It pushes the rocket off the ground and into the sky. But once the fuel runs out, this part drops off to make the rocket lighter. Second stage. Now a smaller rocket takes over and boosts the spacecraft even higher. This part gets the rocket close to space before falling away too. Third stage. This is the final push. It's the last engine that carries the astronauts all the way into space. After that, they only need small thrusters to move around. It's like when you ride a bike up a big hill. You start by pedaling really hard, 
then slow down near the top, and finally just roll down to the other side. That's how rockets get into space. Then, the ultimate experience. We touched on a real moon rock. This sample is collected during Apollo 17, the last manned moon mission. Fun fact! The moon is slowly drifting away from Earth by 1.5 inches per year. Scientists say that in a million years of years, we might not even have total solar eclipses. Next, we stepped into Moonscape, where we saw the real Lunar Module 9 in a life-sized scene from the Apollo 11 moon landing. It's amazing to see how astronauts landed safely on the moon's rough surface. Then, we entered the Lunar Theater to re relieve the intense final moments before the first words were spoken from the moon. The eagle has landed. It felt like being right there in history. Finally, we explored the Apollo Treasures Gallery, where we saw a real Apollo spacecraft and legendary artifacts. One of the coolest things? Alan Shepard's spacesuit, still covered in mo real moon dust. Then, the star of the show, Space Shuttle Atlantis. The Atlantis Space Shuttle is amazing. It flew to space 33 times and even helped build the International Space Station, ISS. This is the only space shuttle displayed in flight mode, suspended in midair as if it's still orbiting Earth. Fun fact, Atlantis traveled over 125 million, million, million miles in space, enough to go to the moon and back 500 times. There's even an astronaut training simulator where you can experience what it's like to la launch into space. Our last stop, Planet Play. This fun indoor playground lets kids climb through a wormhole, slide on Saturn's rink, and play with glowing planets. Wow, what an incredible day! We explored the past, present, and future of space travel, and even touched a piece of the moon. There's so much more to see. One day is not enough to explore all of Kennedy's space sensor. We'll definitely be back for more space adventures. Until next time, Keep looking up.